Now here we have something special. This story is very dear to my heart. When first I narrated it, it was to celebrate reaching 1,000 views. Not on any single video, but 1,000 views for my channel. Like, just to give you perspective. Now I sit at over 100 and 62,000 views. How far we come. And tonight, revamped and ready to terrify you and I once more. Number 11 is Huntsville Camping Trip. The Reboot. I went camping about three weekends ago in the Huntsville National Forest in Texas. Me and three friends that came home for the weekend, they're all in college and usually we all get together at least once a year, old friends from high school. For the camping trip, we plan to go backpacking deep in the forest, live off of fish that we catch and animals that we can trap. We've been doing this for a while in Texas and in numerous places, Arizona, Colorado, if anyone is familiar with the Spanish peaks there, New Mexico so we're pretty much used to anything that you would encounter out there. It was my turn to pick where we went camping, so I chose Huntsville. More accurately, it's Huntsville, New Waverly. So we drove up there, park our car in a camping park spot, and start walking off into the forest. We had some laughs along the way, everyone catching up with each other's lives. We walked until it started to get dark and set up camp where we stopped. Everyone gathered wood to make a fire, and we set our tent up. And we do what we always try to do. Scare each other with weird stories. Around this time, we started to smell something very faint. It was noticeable, but not overbearing. We couldn't put our finger on what it was, so we just carried on. Mike had to go piss, and he walked off into the forest. Not even a second later, he comes back running back, piss all down his jeans like he'd missed really bad. Immediately we all crack up and throw some jokes at him. That isn't until we noticed that he was white as snow and desperately attempting to catch his breath. He started screaming for us to follow him and ran off. We all got serious and went to follow him, not knowing what the problem was. We start to hear a faint scream and crying in the distance, in the direction that we were running. It was pitch black away from the camp, and Mike had the only flashlight. We left ours at the camp. He had his from his trip taking a piss. So at this stage, we didn't have much choice but to follow the light, which was frantically pointing here and there in front of him. The scream got closer, and Mike started to slow down. We then noticed a ratty old cabin that looked like it was abandoned, except for a faint light that we could see from one of the old, mildew-covered windows. The crying was intense. Whoever it was couldn't breathe enough to let out a full yell. We all followed Mike up to the front door, and we could all hear the crying from inside. As soon as he knocked on the door, it stopped. We all waited and heard really heavy footsteps walking fast to the door and then there was a giant slam against the door and the sound of a bolt unlocking. And then nothing. We waited for a bit, knocked a few more times, but still nothing happened. 
We walked around the house. There was no fucking way any of us were leaving each other's side. And noticed a window, which was a good way up. Alex took a deep breath and asked one of us to give him a boost so he could see inside. Me and Mike lifted him up to the window. We watched him brush away dirt and webs from the window and place his face close to it to try and see something. There was a quick beat. Then suddenly he breathed in fast and let out a loud scream, and then he fell back from the window, screaming bloody murder the whole way. We all tried to calm him down, but he was, he was hysterical. We went to him when he started to shake, punch, kick, cuss, you name it, and then he took off towards the camp. None of us wanted to be separated, so we all ran close behind him. We caught up to him and grabbed him and set him down. The fire was dying out, so I grabbed some nearby wood that we collected and added it to the fire. My hands were shaking, and I had to do something. I went back to Alex, and we all tried to calm him down. He wouldn't. He just kept screaming and was breathing so hard that he eventually fainted. All of us were terrified now, and we all kept the fire high until sunrise. Periodically, Alex just kept waking up, screaming like before. By sunrise, he was up and looked catatonic, just mumbling to himself and whimpering. Me and Mike decided to go look at the cabin now that it was daylight. We searched for where we thought it was, except there was nothing there. Nothing at all. The indistinct smell from last night had now grown into the very strong smell of something dead. Something stale. We headed back to the campsite. When we got there, we found Alex had chewed into the side of his face and swallowed so much blood that he was throwing up. John was at his back, and he looked like he was about to die from exhaustion. I guess we all looked that way. I just didn't notice until I saw his face. Alex said quietly that we need to leave. Now. We all started to pack up the tent. It started to rain really heavily. It was about noon, and the sky started to grow really dark. Alex started to go into a panic. He went and grabbed a large stick and yelled at us to leave and leave it. Now or he would knock us out and drag us out of there himself. Mike started to yell at him and they started to fight. We broke it up and finished packing and then started to make our way back. After a little while, we arrived at a creek that we had crossed the previous day. Only it was flooded over, and the water was moving too fast for us to cross it. Alex started to scream again, yelling at Mike for taking his time packing up the tent, and that we could have gotten out of there. This went on for a while until we finally convinced Alex to calm down and tell us what happened. He said that as soon as he put his face to the glass, a face on the other side did the same thing and started to smile real big bigger than Alex thought was possible. It had dark eyes and a dark mouth. A giant shadow behind it swung something down and sliced its face off just as Alex got full view of it. The face was stuck to the window and he said that it started to laugh quietly as it slid down. Mike, still pissed off and, though he wouldn't admit it, beginning to get really freaked out, started to argue with him again. We eventually started to follow the creek for a way to cross. We then started to see toys floating in the creek. Really old toys. Old Barbie dolls and baby dolls. This wasn't like any old trash floating in the creek, though. This was a lot of Barbies, a lot of baby dolls. One washed towards the side and Mike picked it up. It had some kind of voice chip that was dying and started to say some gurgling words. We couldn't understand, followed by its sad excuse for laughter. And then it sounded like it was whispering. We thought the batteries must be dying, and we threw it down. We kept going and the sun was starting to set. Alex was freaking out more now and was whimpering and breathing heavily. We all started to see shadows move behind trees something we all called BS on until we were all seeing it. It was barely light out and we stop as we see the cabin right in front of us. None of us knows what to think. Mike says, this is bullshit, I'm going in there. And Alex tries to stop him. We all do. All of us just wanted to go home. Mike says to all of us to fuck off, to do our own thing, that he doesn't care anymore, that this is all bullshit. 
we start to hear hundreds of the same sort of baby dolls as before, laughing, whispering, trying to sing. We start to move forward past the cat and all of us, and kept pushing on. We smelled something dead in the air, something stale. The same something as before, and we started to hear something crying, and something screaming. We kept on going. We eventually crossed the creek and left the woods. We get back to our vehicle and get in. It's pitch black and we drive. We're about to get onto the 45 to Houston, but the road is under construction and can't be accessed. It points to a detour. As we head towards the detour, it seems to be a small, bumpy dirt road going into the woods. We then see a young girl come up to us. She looks like she was in trouble, young and pretty. She approaches the passenger side door, and she looks like she's really drugged up or, or beaten up. Alex doesn't roll down the windows, nor does he open the door. She reaches for the handle and he immediately locks it. She puts her face on the window and starts to smile really big. We floor it. Alex starts to cry and scream, and we're all breathing heavily at this point. We finally cut onto a street that takes us to the 45, and we take it the whole way. When we get back to my apartment, everyone doesn't know what to say, and we all break apart and, and go our separate ways. I wish we would have stayed together. Mike messages me later and says that he's going to go back. I try to convince him not to, and all he does is say that it was all our own minds that were screwing with us. I, I think he just went to prove to himself that he wasn't scared. I can smell that stench everywhere now. I don't go out anymore, I, I just stay in and I don't answer the door. Last week, last week everyone I met was acting really strange. People that I knew for a long time and, and total strangers. My own father, when I went to his place to eat supper with him, he just watched me strangely when I was sitting down. He didn't say a word the whole time. I kept asking him what's wrong. But he just slowly shook his head. When I was leaving to go home, I turned to wave. And he had, he had black eyes and an open mouth like he was in pain. When I started to walk back, he shut the door and bolted it. I stayed there knocking and knocking and knocking. Nothing. I called him and his phone is disconnected. I even called the police. But halfway through the questions they were asking me, the connection started to fade into static, and, and I could hear a faint mumbling, uh, singing, and laughing. Mike has completely vanished. There's not even a record of him being alive. And when I call Alex's house, they talk to me like I'm some salesman. They say they don't know any Alex, and to please stop calling. The person who tells me this is Alex's mother! I, I can't... I can't get a hold of John. Someone knocked on my door, and when I went to look, I saw a face completely covering the people, and a giant smile starting to form. I called the cops again, and instead of it turning into static, they just... They just got really, really strange. Sir, are you affected by any drugs at the moment? No! And are you coming home anytime soon? Excuse me? Come home. And then, and then the phone call ended. My mail slot swings every now and then. Someone is sliding pieces of baby dolls through it. I try to call people now and all I can hear is static and bad baby doll noises and this crying and screaming. My TV's busted, but when I go to piss, I can hear it on. I can hear the static, the white snow, making its way onto the TV screen, just when I'm out of sight. I, I might be going insane. Whoever lives above me started to scream in pain and cry deeply recently. I hear giant footsteps from their apartment. I hear bangs and something falling to the ground. From the neighbors to the right of my apartment, I hear what sounds like a baby that never gets tended to, and then it sounds like a baby doll whose batteries are dying. My phone has been ringing now, and it's Alex telling me things in a language that I've never heard before, nor could even manage to repeat. I kept getting emails of pictures of black and small colorations, but now, now I can't even access my email. Someone knocks on the door, 
and then they slam against it. I hear the bolts unlocking one by one. And I run to make sure to lock all of them back. <laughs> and then I sit down in my apartment. And I begin to cry. <laughs> <laughs>